Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 7, Part 2 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, presenting further related information about the laws of compensation, focusing on the metaphor of reaping in proportion to what is sown. The session was recorded on the 12th of December 2017 from 11 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Why people on earth appear to avoid proportionate compensation? So on earth, some people seem to get a lot. <laughs> Um, when they don't seem to do very much mm -hmm. or give very, they don't seem to give very much and they seem to get quite a lot mm. um, or they don't seem to try for very much and they seem to have a lot of things mm -hmm. um, or they seem to just like do 10 push-ups and great, great muscles while the rest of us are doing <laughs> 75 and not getting many. You know, they seem to get put in a little effort and they get a big result. So... Um, how is this possible if we reap proportionate to what we sow? Well, there's a lot of things that are not being considered in those kind of statements. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing that's not being considered is where is the reaping coming from? See, it won't be from God's law. Mm. It'll be from human systems. Mm. So, so firstly, we need to consider that the people who are reaping a lot more than what they've sown are getting it because of something that's wrong in the human system, yeah. not because of anything that's right or wrong in God's system. Yeah. God's system is perfect. Yeah. It only gives what is in proportion mm -hmm. to what is sown. Yeah. So, so the fact that we're seemingly, some people are seemingly reaping more than what is sown has to come from the fallible human system yeah not from god's system now maybe if i give a result of that an, an example of that let's say i'm i'm the son of a very rich man mm -hmm. and he's very old mm -hmm. and very sick because mm -hmm. he's worked so hard and whatever to get his gain his riches and he dies and he wills all of his wealth to me and i've done nothing for it yeah right that would seemingly mean, in, in regard to, you know, how someone might an analyze in first view, yep. that God has rewarded the guy. That you, you know, basically. Me, rewarded me for just being the son of the rich, rich man. guy. Yeah. Now, that is all it seems, that's all just what seems to be. Mm -hmm. The reality is the fact that I'm accepting the work of another mm -hmm. from God's perspective is already a sin. Mm without me having created it. So just by accepting the wealth of my father without and using it all on myself yep. is immediately out of harmony with God's laws of love and therefore severe compensatory penalties exist. Mm. Corrections exist that will be imposed upon my soul immediately mm -hmm. for that kind of behaviour. Yep. Something which is normal in the world today, accepting the wealth of our forebears mm -hmm. without any consideration and then using it for our own advancement. Mm. Something like that, from God's perspective, is very wrong, actually. So you're saying that material wealth on earth is not a good reflector of true compensation not only is material wealth not a good reflector but also people's bodies are not a good reflector and a number of other things because people's bodies often it depends on the emotional injuries of our forebears as to what you know it what imperfections appear in our body so the genetics which is dictated by emotions and then the emotional genetics if you like of what we arrive with the soul condition that we yes. arrive with as a result of what was or was not within our forebears yes yep. and we will be if it was very negative in the future god will compensate positively us mm -hmm. for having to bear that terrible burden yep. and if what we uh, received was positive and we don't look after it of course then we will be corrected for our poor behavior as a result yeah. so so you know again uh, the human system is very flawed 
And this is why humans have very little understanding of love, of course, yeah. because they do not understand how God's system work. Mm. And so this is why most people, when they arrive in the spirit world and God's system is now imposed, there's yes. no human systems that are imposed there, God's systems are imposed. Now they're very confused because what, what they thought they had before, they no longer have anymore. Mm -hmm. It's a bit like a, a man who, let's say, is a minister of religion who's believed all of his life that he sacrifices and he does the right thing and he doesn't have a relationship, like if he was a Catholic minister, let's mm -hmm. say, doesn't have a relationship with any woman and he's been celibate and he's done all these really, really good things and he's been really hard on himself through the process <laughs> Yeah, that's as well, not really that good, usually, is it? No. You know, and he yeah. arrives in the spirit world thinking he's going to be rewarded for all of those things. But all of those things are actually actions from God's perspective that are out of harmony with love. Yeah. And so the reality is he's penalized or corrected yeah. for all corrected. of those things. Yeah. And so he's going to arrive in such a shock state. So while the world or his order, his mm -hmm. religious order, may reward such behavior, yeah. God does not. Mm -hmm. and, and we need to bear this in mind when we analyze the results of proportionate conversation. When it looks like people on earth are avoiding, you know, proportionate compensation, it's only an image. It's mm. only a facade. It's mm. not really happening. And the only way they're actually avoiding anything is by others in this world paying for the things that they avoid. So is it fair to say then it's the will based, the personal desire and will of individuals choosing to meet the addictions or meet the demands of other people or meet the expectations of other people or just thinking they're doing a good thing when they're frequently not yeah we're having misguided, which you see a lot in families you misguided know, good intentions like i'm going to give all yeah. my wealth to my children yeah without any consideration to how my children use that wealth and how it's moral or ethical to just do that yeah and and what's why are my children more important to me than the rest of humanity yes why is that? Yep. And why do my children think that they should be more important yeah. to me than the rest of humanity? Why Probably is that? Probably because I taught them. Probably yeah. because I taught them, right? <laughs> but all of those things are out of harmony with God's laws and therefore that will be yeah. compensated for from God's perspective. Yes. Yeah. So, so while it may appear that I am benefiting from other people's yeah. by actions yeah. and that I'm not reaping in proportion to what I personally sowed, mm. the reality is... I'm actually reaping a very p poor harvest yeah. of a lot of pain and suffering when I engage the, you know, reaping from what others have sown without any consideration of what that means or what responsibilities or that places upon me with regard to love. Yes, got gotcha. you. So, so you're saying it's the because the earth itself is in so much opposition to the way that God's laws and God's love uh, exist, mm. then very often people on earth are making decisions out of harmony with God's love and laws that reward injury and error and... And, and bad behaviour and behavior. poor belief systems and yep. all, all, they reward all of those things. And that's why we can't but God's confuse... God's laws don't. Yes, we can't confuse the actions of individuals with God's actions. Yes, yes. and a lot of these things get corrected once a person enters the spirit world because on earth there's this regime, if you like, mm -hmm. of unloving behaviour. Yeah. Which, which where we reward unloving behaviour, we attack loving behaviour. There's all sorts of problems on earth when it comes to behaviour. But God's system measures everything from God's perspective, not from human perspective. Yeah. And so while I might be receiving the benefit of my parents' wealth mm -hmm. without having done any work, God immediately is penalizing me for receiving the benefits yeah. of my parents' wealth if I choose to use that wealth in a selfish manner. Yeah. yeah. Which is a natural consequence of the law in operation of yeah. selfishness, you yes. know, trying to correct selfishness. Yes. And so negative compensation is applied to the parent and the child, whoever, whoever is acting in harmony. And I use that term negative compensation. That's cor incorrect, isn't it? But painful compensation. Yeah, corrective, corrective, corrective compensation, compensation, which is often painful, but only because of our attitude to it. Because we need correction. Yeah, because we need the correction. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the, yeah. it's the opposition to the law that creates pain. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, compensation is applied to everyone who is resisting correction on all of the issues and yes. who acts in opposition 
Yes. To the laws. So a man who, through his own effort, builds up a certain amount of wealth, and he and he's let's say he's doing it in an ethical and loving manner, yep. and he builds up wealth over a period of time because of his effort, because it's mm-hmm. in proportion to yes. what he sowed, yep. and God's rewarding him in that circumstance. But yep. as soon as he wills all that to a child who has had no effort, yes. There's a penalty associated, a correction associated yeah. with now the parent because the parent's got the wrong idea. Yeah. Who who should he be giving it to? He should be giving it to someone who's going to use that money wisely. Yes. And unselfishly. Yes. That's who he should be giving it to yeah. from God's perspective. Yeah. And and from God's perspective, any person on earth is one of God's children. Yeah. So he can give it to any person on earth yeah. who's going to use it. Meet those. Who's yeah. going to meet those requirements? Yeah. That's that's God's perspective. Yeah. That's not human's perspective. Human perspective is, oh, they're my children. I've got to look after my children. Yeah. You know, my children are more important than other people's children and yes. so forth. And so there's the correction that's needed. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's unloving ideas and concepts there that need to be corrected. Mm-hmm. And God's laws are correcting them, even though we might not see them until we've passed yes. into the spirit world. Yes. And in the first century, I gave some illustrations of that, you know, where a man builds up storehouses and, you know, and just at the time he's got the maximum amount of wealth, he dies mm-hmm. and and he's got nothing good in his soul, mm. nothing loving in his soul. Where is he going to end up? Not in a happy place. I gave another illustration of a rich man and Lazarus who Lazarus was a, was fed less than the dogs of the, from the rich man's table. Mm-hmm. And when they died, Lazarus was in the bosom position of God, I called it. <laughs> and the rich man was in the hills. Yeah. And uh, the rich man couldn't do anything about it then. He'd already squandered his opportunities mm. to be loving when yeah. he had the wealth to be When loving. he had the opportunity. When he had the opportunity. Yeah. And these are all illustrations trying to demonstrate the law of conversation in work. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, very good. How the efforts of others affect what I reap. So here I'd like to ask you about how other people's actions and words and thoughts and desires impact upon the harvest that I personally experience. Mm, So mm. do I ever benefit from the abundant sowing of others? Or I could ask, do I, am I ever negatively affected by the sparing sowing of others? Mm. Well, these are, these are good questions, of course. And, and again, we've got to not confuse the law of compensation with the results of a person's actions because because the results of a person's actions are not always governed by the law of compensation Mm. right but let's uh, sort of be more have more clarity on the issue firstly every one of us is connected to the universe in which we live Mm. so naturally something that i do whether it's loving or unloving is going to have an effect on you because you live in the same universe i live in Mm -hmm. Right. And that applies whether I can see you or not, too. Mm. It's going to have an effect on you if you're a spirit, mm-hmm. whether I can see you or not. Mm-hmm. Whether I've been loving or unloving will have the effect. Now, if I've been loving, all of the be- there should be a lot of benefits to you if you allow yourself to receive them. Mm-hmm. Right? If I've been unloving, there will naturally be a lot of difficulties for you as a result of my unloving behaviour. Yeah. That's why the law of compensation exists, mm. because it's saying, look, you've caused difficulties for other people. Mm-hmm. You need to fix it. Yeah, you've got yeah. the wrong attitude. Yes. Right? The law of compensation exists to correct my desire to do unloving things, yeah. because it's basically saying, no, you live in a universe that you, you're, not a, you're not an island here. No, right? you do have an effect on others. You do have an effect on others, yeah. and you do have an effect on the environment, yeah. and you do have an effect on matter even yeah. in the universe. So, so what you choose to do as a choice is definitely going to have a negative effect or a positive effect depending on what loving or uh, lo- yeah. unloving or loving choice you made yeah now we need to bear that in mind firstly that every person lives in this universe and every single person has a responsibility mm-hmm. because they live in this universe has a responsibility associated with bringing themselves into harmony with love so that the universe can benefit from their existence mm-hmm as well as them benefiting personally from their existence. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing we need to bear in Mm -hmm. mind. Now, if my behaviour does affect other people in unloving ways, and remember, this is from God's perspective, not from my own, then then naturally I will be immediately penalised, immediately. My soul will be immediately Mm penalised. 
immediately correct it mm -hmm. for my unloving behavior that I'm engaged. And if I have affected other people as a result of this unloving behavior, naturally, because that behavior is unloving, the effect on other people will also be unloving. Yeah. Naturally, they will feel some pain associated with the fact that I chose to be unloving. And the reason why God then imposes a lot upon my soul as a result is because God knows I just caused the pain of these other people by my unloving behavior. So I, I need to be corrected for that unloving behavior. And I need to eventually see that I did cause pain for others through my unloving behavior. Yep. So that's a very important thing. And it's also important to understand that any person that I did affect yep. will at some point in the future be positively compensated by God for the fact that I negatively affected them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? So this is a beautiful thing God it does is. too. He, he, he's also trying to make it better for the person I harmed, mm, so, even though I don't desire to make it better for the and, person I harmed. And even though it wasn't God's actions, it was a, a personal will-based decision on your part to harm me, God still wants me to feel... God saying, even if you do nothing to make this person feel better, I'm going I'm to love going them. To I'm love going to give them gifts. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to love them. Yeah. yeah. Even if you don't want to love them, yeah. I'm going to is what yes. God is saying, really. Yeah. He's going to love us even if no one on this planet loves us. Mm. And he's going to give us the gift of the, the gift of love. You know, every, love wants to give gifts to its yeah. recipients. Yeah. And, and so he's going to give the, those gifts as a result of his love, whether anybody on earth does that with us or not. Yes. All right. So we need, yeah. we need to grasp that. Now, if my behavior affects others in loving ways, so, so again, from God's perspective, mm -hmm. then naturally I will benefit because I can't be correct. Yeah. God wants to say to us, I think that's fantastic what <laughs> yeah. you did. It's in harmony with love, whatever you chose to do there. So we'll be, there'll be no correction. There'll be rewards mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. But also because of my actions, other people are not going to have any painful results. And so they, therefore, they will not feel pain associated with my actions, but rather they can personally benefit from my actions. Mm -hmm. So, yes, people do benefit from my actions, mm. but it's not compensation. Mm. It's because of the gift of my action yeah. that they benefit from my action. Yes. Yep. So, so to summarise that, I can benefit from the abundant sowing of others but that's not the operation of compensation there. That is a part of the gift that you are giving me, for example, if you had chosen to do that. Yeah. And um, and that's applied to me as, a, you know, God's saying, you just gave that person a gift. It's not that wonderful. Yes. And I, the compensation does work upon me giving the gift. Yes. Uh, yes. Because that was something that you weren't desired. obliged to do. That's you right. did of your own free will that's and right. desire. Yep. Okay. And so I can also be negatively affected if if somebody sows sparingly like if everyone cuts down the trees before i'm even born there's a bummer for me you yeah. know that's yeah. not good it, it could be really bad if uh, everyone yeah. destroys the ocean and cuts down the trees you could have no oxygen to yes. breathe yeah it'd be a short-lived <laughs> life yeah however um you're saying compensation will take into account my lack of uh, negative, uh, you know, harmful intention and desire yeah, in that you, case. You were completely And I will be innocent. rewarded or almost um, compensated positively or with compensatory happiness or, you know, something, yeah. opportunity, because uh, something outside of my control created a bad situation for me. For me. And that is compensation. Yeah, and that's yeah. a positive compensation, gotcha. what you call com positive or reward. Reward. Associated with somebody else's yes. negative or unloving behaviour yeah. that needs to be corrected. Good. Yeah. Got it. So, so I think uh, the last couple of paragraphs here are important to probably read out. So mm -hmm. let's, I'm saying the law of compensation is not punitive, mm. right? but rather it's corrective. So it's not yes. about punishing a person, yeah. it's about correcting the person. So mm -hmm. on earth here, when we look at, you know, somebody breaking the law, we're, we, we like the concept of punishment. And a lot of punishment concepts are based around anger. You know, yes. we, we really feel angry that the person did something because they harmed us or whatever. And so we really want to make their life miserable. Yeah. That, that's, their, that's our underlying goal. That's yeah. not God's goal. No. 
God's goal is to correct the underlying unloving behavior mm -hmm. so that the person no longer engages that unloving behavior. So that's yep. the first thing. Yep. It doesn't punish others for my unloving behavior. So let's say I engage an unloving act which does affect you negatively. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you're being punished. No. That means I've taken from you. Yes. I've been unloving and the natural consequence of me being unloving is you are going to have some pain. Yeah as well as me, yeah. uh, in fact, I'm going to have more pain than you in the long run yeah. by being unloving, but you will also have some pain. And if I can see your pain, mm -hmm. go, wow, I did that. Mm -hmm. Now I can be corrected, yes. right? I can, I can correct my behavior. But if I see your pain and go, you beauty, that's what I wanted to do. Mm. Or, or isn't this great? I've benefited. It doesn't matter what you feel. Yeah. Now that unloving behavior of mine needs to be corrected. Yeah. But you're not being punished. Mm -hmm you are bearing the consequence of living in an in, in a universe yeah. in which I exist. In which free will beings exist. Well, no, yeah. no, no. The real problem is that I exist and I want to be evil because yes. I didn't finish my statement, right? You are living in an environment where I, a person who's desiring to use their will in an evil way. Mm. And that's why you hurt. Mm. It's got nothing to do with the law of compensation. You're not mm. being corrected for some past misdeed, mm -hmm. you were hurting because I chose mm. to be evil. Mm. Does that make sense? Now, in, so, in other cases, you chose to do things in your past mm -hmm. and you are being corrected for those. Yes. So any pain and emotional suffering you have, physical pain and emotional suffering and physical suffering you have, that is a result of your behavior that that certainly is attributed to you yes. not, not to me yeah but anything that i have done mm -hmm. towards you is you, you receiving the painful behavior is not anything to do with the compensatory the laws actions. Yeah. it's got everything to do with the fact that i chose to do something unloving and that naturally is going to have a harmful effect mm. upon you mm. Mm. it's like we're born into this universe where everyone has a free will and there's for there's the potential that people might use their their actions to be harmful but that sort of helps us to understand the gift of love doesn't it because when somebody chooses if we really understand choice then we know that if somebody chooses to love me then that's such an immense gift isn't it yeah well i think it helps us understand a lot of things actually not just the gift of love the more like the gift of will yeah. The gift of desire, the gift of free will. What The fact that God's given us the gift of free will is a wonderful gift. And this gift needs to be honoured. Mm -hmm. People are allowed to choose to do what they wish to do. Mm -hmm. But God's laws don't go, oh, I'm not going to do anything about your unloving behaviour. Mm -hmm. God's laws are always correcting unloving behaviour. Mm -hmm. We also need to understand that a lot of the results of what we see on earth are not the results of God's laws, but are the results of human law, mm. human human concepts, human belief systems, human ideas that are out of harmony with God's love. Mm. And so we can't measure easily the results of compensation on earth as a result of that, because quite often we've got factors mm. that are to do with the flawed concepts of humanity injected into our analysis. Yes. Once we pass in the spirit world, that doesn't happen, of course. Yeah. And so now it's much more clear to us as to what is mine that I did <laughs> yeah. and what is yours that you did. Yeah. Now, the key on earth is to get to the point where you want to know that. Yes. And that's where forgiveness and repentance comes in, yes. where you really want to know that. But for most people on earth, they don't want to know whether no. they've done something to harm another. Yeah. And they even don't want to know whether somebody else has done harm to them, even yes. in many cases. Yeah. And because we don't want to know the truth, mm -hmm. naturally the law of compensation has to operate yeah. in order to correct us. Yeah. But don't confuse the operation of the law with the operation of human belief systems, mm -hmm. which are completely different to the law, mm -hmm. and often appear, give the appearance of reward, but from God's perspective, all there is is pain and suffering, yeah. more pain and suffering. Yeah. So we need to not be confused about that matter. Very so good. I thought to you too um, that it's Im Im important to, for us to understand the summary, which I've said, I do benefit from the abundant sowing of others, but because it's a gift they're giving me, oh, right? Yes. Yeah. I do benefit, but not through the law of compensation directly. Mm -hmm. In other words, 
I'm not getting rewarded because of your abundant sowing. Yeah. Right. But rather it's through your gift yes. that you give to me because of your behavior engaged in a loving manner. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. why I'm benefiting. Yes. So, so the reality is if I engage loving behavior, loving thoughts, loving words, loving actions, loving feelings, they will have a good effect on you. But that's not compensation. Mm -hmm. That's my gift of mm -hmm. love to you. Mm -hmm. right? And we need to see it that way. Gotcha. Mm. Just in a, in a previous answer, you talked about um, how you, so you, you use the housework analogy where I just been doing everything and you got cranky and I left and then you making a change inside of yourself kind of opened me up to you again and I came back and you're sort of saying that that's a part of compensation in that were you saying that my because where I got confused in that answer was I see that my decision to come back is still largely based upon my choice and God can't really dictate my choice at that point mm -hmm. but, but you're you obviously saying, chose to do something in harmony with the love you felt Yes, the change within you. Yes, and, and, you, and but I, may, I had to make the change before you could feel it. Yes. So, so the compensation for me is I made the change. Yes, but you said a part of your compensation or a part of the compensation was me come. That was a gift of compensation. Sorry, me coming back was a gift of compensation. Part of the gift was you leaving. Yes. As well as you coming back. Yeah. But both of those things are purely based. I understand that compensation is working on me as well in this whole exchange. Yeah, forget about you for the moment. Yeah. Because let's look at it from my perspective. Yeah. I'm engaging in unloving behaviour. Yep. God's laws are already operating upon my soul to try and correct my behaviour. Get all that. Yeah. I ignored all of the operation of God's laws upon my soul. Yes. Until you got upset. Yes. You left. Yes. That brought me to my senses. Mm -hmm. You leaving, in a way, was the result of my engaging unloving behaviour. Yes, yes. So you could say your leaving is the result of my desire to be unloving. Yes. Right? Now, it was great that you chose to le leave. Mm -hmm. and it was good for me because yep. it caused me to pause and see. Yeah. Right? But you leaving is your gift to me. Yes. But, but it is also my... the result of my unloving behaviour. Yes. Right? Yeah. In other words, I'm destroying our relationship and that's part of the compensatory effect yep. of my choice to be unloving to you. Yeah. I'm going to finish up destroying relationships. It's the effect that you're having on others, which is what we've just been talking that's right. about. Yeah. Your choice of what you do with that effect is your choice. Yes. It's got nothing to do with me except that I can see that I triggered it and it's my triggering of it yes. my my creation of it yes that is the, is the conversation the corrective conversation yeah i created it i am the one who sat on his backside for a month definitely and just watched telly yeah. while well, you did everything yeah. i created this situation not you yeah you leaving is just a, a good result from a compensation perspective yes yeah it's yeah. a good choice and a good yeah. result yeah to help me correct myself. Yes. Right? That's your gift to me. Yes. But but you deciding to leave or even wanting to leave yes. was caused by me. Yes. It was still because many women stay in that situation mm -hmm. and don't ever make the choice. No, what they do is they get angry get and angry, they project angry. anger. So yep. now both people have compensation yes. to address one. <laughs> is yeah. passive or aggressive with their anger towards the yeah. other and the other one is still lazy and yes. they live in that situation for good. Yeah. Now yeah. that is going to have no benefit whatsoever. Now the law of compensation is still operating upon the soul. Yes. I, I'm still being penalised or corrected for my bad behaviour. Yes, I guess I suppose I was um, just looking at how my will mm -hmm. and my choices fit within the framework of compensation. But I understand compensation is working upon my choices as well as yours. It's working on my soul, isn't it? Yes. And it's working on your soul. To, to, uh, the longer I stay... Independently... Yes, of each, of each other. Of each other. But then my choice to leave and then come back, as we discussed in the previous analogy... Your choice analogy, to leave is a gift? Yes. It's a gift because you're calling that not strictly compensation. It's a gift 
of compensation because it is my choice yes. that I could make a different choice. Whereas if you got angry and stayed, that that's not a gift. That's <laughs> not a gift. It's and but but it is a part of my compensation. Yeah, that's where I get a bit <laughs> like fuddled for some because reason. Because I triggered it. I triggered your anger. Your anger wouldn't exist. Yes. In there. Yeah. You you wouldn't have got angry if I didn't do this bad thing. Well, there's two things, isn't there? There's I wouldn't have got angry if you hadn't done the things, if I hadn't have, have avoided the compensation that was already working upon me to leave mm -hmm. or and to not put up with to not put behavior. up with it and to forgive basically mm. so all of the compensation was acting on all of those things yes mm. it's not strictly compensation but it's a gift of compensation because compensation is working towards these outcomes by working upon both of our souls simultaneously correct so there's a difference between the actual operation of the law and the gifts the law brings yes and you know compensation brings many gifts whether it's been corrective or rewarding yes it brings many gifts but yes. people can choose to act in disharmony with with their feelings and their and the law yeah and and under those circumstances the compensation is still having its effect on me yes i'm just not noticing the gifts anymore yeah um, but this is where earlier you were saying that the gifts are not necessarily proportionate because they are very much based upon the personal choices of the other people involved yes and mine uh, and you know, every, of everyone it's yeah. personal choice whereas the law of compensation and its operations upon the direct souls of people involved that's always proportionate always proportionate precise, always exact, exact precise in exact kind. in kind yeah. in proportion yeah and and never wavering yes. never wavering yeah so you can't get away from it you can't manipulate it you can't control it you can't rely on the generosity of others mm -hmm. compensation. all the gifts or the choices or the anything the law yeah. of compensation operates in a in a completely you could say you could say it's complete completely passionateless <laughs> if you like passionless yeah it's it's <laughs> not <laughs> it's not trying to harm you and it's not yeah. it's just yeah. it's just trying to reinforce that certain behaviors are bad and certain behaviors are good it's in other like words maths. certain behaviors are loving unloving and certain yeah. behaviors are loving it's like maths it's like maths two plus two always four yeah the end that's how there's the law works nothing to sway it there's no flavor of emotion there's to no it. personal it just opinion is. there's yeah. no you know yeah there's no feeling uh, you know feelings of other people are independent on mm -hmm. of the law and choices and, and choices everything. and whatever yeah. yeah whereas the gifts come where there's choices that's mm -hmm. right yeah. nice yeah nice. Thank whereas, you. whereas the whereas the actual operation of the law it, it the penalizes the soul corrects the soul that is out of harmony with love, it rewards the soul in harmony with love. Mm -hmm. And the reward is identical for identical actions and mm -hmm. the penalty is identical for identical, you know, mm -hmm. unloving actions. Yeah. And it's always going to be the same. Yeah. Right. And, you know, the fact that I've destroyed my relationship mm -hmm. is one of the penalties associated with me being lazy yeah. in a relationship. <laughs> yeah. That is a penalty associated. It's a given that sooner or later, I'm going to destroy the relationship. Mm -hmm. Now, from God's perspective, I'm destroying it right the moment that I do it. Mm. Now, it might take you a month mm -hmm. or a year or 10 years or 50 years to work that out. Yes. As my partner. Yeah. That I'm doing something unloving to you. Yeah. But from God's perspective, God knew it at the time I did it. Yes. <laughs> and that's what God pen God's laws. God's laws. Penalized or yeah. attempt to correct. To correct. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Fantastic. Thank you. The law of compensation does not punish those who are innocent. Mm. Am I ever being punished or doing without something due to the sparing or the unloving sowing of others, the small amount of sowing? Mm. Well, again, remember, this is very similar discussion to our previous uh, question when we talked about what was it, the idea of, uh, just let me go back through the, the notes, oops, wrong way, um, how the efforts of others affect what I yes. preach. So, so here we're saying, um, let's say I, I, I didn't do anything, I, I wasn't, I, I was innocent of any bad action, I was always trying to be loving, and then something bad happens to me, am I being punished? Mm. by God for Basically. some unknown reason, <laughs> you know what I mean, <laughs> is really what we're saying. Well, every action that I take as an individual naturally has a consequence. 
it has consequences upon myself mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. because you live in the same universe that I live in. So, so naturally, any action I take is going to affect you in some way. We've got to be very careful, though, in assuming that that action is a, a compensatory effect upon my upon me, upon me, for mm. example. Now, um, to give you, well, maybe maybe we need to discuss more about it, and then we'll have a f look at a few examples. It isn't the law, but rather it's my unloving behaviour that causes others to be painfully damaged. So, so it's my uh, destruction of others, if you could call it that, mm -hmm. that has caused the other to be damaged painfully. Yeah. It's not the law. The law is not saying, oh, because you chose this action, we're going to punish everyone around you as well as you. Mm. The law doesn't do that yeah. and never would. In fact, if you think about it, it'd be very unfair yeah. for me to take an action and then everyone around me be punished because I took the action. Right? Everyone around me is negatively affected, though, mm -hmm. because I chose to be unloving mm -hmm. and, and chose to destroy them in some way, try, chose to harm them in some way. That's why they're affected. Yeah. And the reason why my soul is compensated correctively mm -hmm. for what I chose to do unlovingly is because of that damage that it potentially or would do to mm -hmm. others. So naturally, the compensation upon me is a direct result upon, of, of my unloving behaviour and what effects it would have upon the world around me, yep. the universe around me. Yeah. So the law of compensation doesn't punish or reward others but it corrects me yes. and rewards me. Yes. It corrects me if I'm not loving and rewards me if I'm loving. Yeah. That's what it does. Yeah. It doesn't correct others for me, mm -hmm. except where they need correction because they're being unloving towards me. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So in other words, if I choose to do something unloving and you choose to say nothing about it, now you've chose something unloving. Yes. I will be corrected for my un original unloving behaviour. Yeah. You will be corrected for your unloving behaviour of not saying the truth about it. Yes. You will be rewarded at the same time. For the uh, exposure to your negative yeah. behaviour. Yes. Yeah. So, so you, in other words, there will be compensation given to you. Yes. For what I did to you. Yeah. But at the same time, you are going to be corrected for your lack of courage yes. for speaking up about the situation, right? Gotcha. Yep. So this is often what happens in interactions between people. What often happens is that one person does something unloving mm -hmm. and the next person makes a choice which is also unloving, mm -hmm. right? That person is going to be corrected for their choice that's unloving, yep. just as I am going to be corrected for my choice that was unloving. Yeah. And I can't say that what happened to you as a result of my actions mm -hmm. is part of your compensation because it's not right your compensation is only the result of your actions yeah <laughs> <laughs> got you yeah no that's really good and i think in previous discussion in this same session we have covered that pretty much very thoroughly and we've talked about um i think so maybe if i could provide um, some more examples and, and some clarification, maybe. I could do. Like, let's look at any effect that I have on other people is really an expression or is the result of my loving or unloving behaviour. Yep. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. It's not from the law of compensation. It's just an expression or the result of yeah. my loving or unloving behaviour. If I loved, the result can only be good for myself and others. And if I don't love. Mm -hmm. The result can only be bad for myself and others. Yeah, that, That's the reality. And if we look at it, I think I've written down here an exo uh, example of a parent who, um, who retains unloving attitudes and beliefs about money. They haven't released their unloving attitudes and beliefs. Those unloving attitudes and beliefs are imposed upon their children, obviously. Yep. The children will naturally bear the consequence of my unloving attitudes and beliefs. Mm -hmm. But that's not their fault. Yeah, They are not compensated correctively for that, mm -hmm. except where they choose to retain those unloving beliefs and act upon them. Yeah. Now they are corrected for that. Yeah. 
But if they knew or they could see, oh, my dad has some pretty unloving beliefs about money, money. and finances, yep. I need to work through them and I'm going to choose to work through them rather than imposing those unloving beliefs and attitudes upon others and my environment. Mm -hmm. If they chose to do that, there would be no negative effect, even from my action yeah. upon them anymore. Yeah. Because I've chosen to work through forgiveness on the issue yeah. and also repent for any attitude that's now in them mm -hmm. for the issue that they may have acted upon. And now they're free of yeah. the decision, my yeah. decision to be unloving to them. Yeah. Mm. Very good. Pain is created whenever the law of love is disobeyed. So here I'd like to ask you about the experience of pain in our day-to-day -day lives. Mm -hmm. If I'm experiencing pain and suffering in my life, is that the result of the law of compensation working on my own unloving behaviour or condition? Or can it be the result of someone else being unloving to me? Yes, well, we've got to understand that there's basically only two causes of pain and suffering in our lives. Mm -hmm. The first cause is when I have been unloving mm -hmm. and I refuse to repent for my unloving behaviour. So in that case, compensation is working upon my condition because i'm choosing to be unloving to be unloving yep it's working on my condition mm -hmm. trying to correct my unloving behavior yep right and i'm refusing to be repent because repenting remember would be a higher law yes so compensation has to do its work yes in order to correct me mm -hmm. so it's the first reason why i have pain my may have pain and suffering mm -hmm. the second reason why i may, may have pain and suffering really doesn't have much to do with anybody else it also has a lot to do with me. Mm. And that is, it, it's to do with my refusal to forgive other people's unloving behaviour. Mm -hmm. So in other words, someone does something unloving to me mm -hmm. and I refuse to forgive them for it. I refuse mm -hmm. to let go, emotionally let go, of the results of what they did to me. So in that case, compensation is still working upon me. Upon my soul. Mm -hmm. Right. So m my pain can only have a, a ultimate cause of my pain can only be within me, mm -hmm. either my refusal to repent mm -hmm. or my refusal to forgive. Yeah. That's the ultimate cause of my pain. If I was in a state where I was willing to forgive everybody all the time, yes, I would not actually have pain mm. that is the result of other people's actions. Yes. I would only have pain, that, which is a result of my actions. Mm. And if I was willing to repent all the time and forgive all the time, yes, I would never have any pain at all. Yes, and I would never actually take any unloving actions, would I? Not, not once you've released emotionally. I'm saying mm. before you've released the causes of unloving action emotionally. Yes. If I was willing to repent for every new, uh, everything that I, you know, can yep. eventually, you can't, you can't do it overnight, of course. No. And I was willing to forgive everything. Yeah. then I would have no pain at all, even if I'm not yet perfect. But as we heard when we discussed the kind of the how forgiveness and repentance happens, that's a painful process. I do go mm. through pain and, and so forth to forgive and repent, but it's transient, isn't it? It's not an, a day-to-day -day thing. The pain is only a result of our resistance. Mm. It's not the result of our engaging a law. It's a result of our resistance Resisting. to the law always yes and yep. it's also the result of past things we have not let go of in other words our past resistance yeah so so for example there's a if i have pain uh, let's say something happens and i decide oh, i'm just going to have a good cry about how that person treated me mm -hmm. that pain that i'm feeling right now yes about how that person treated me is not probably about how that person treated me it's about past pain from how others have treated me, that mm -hmm. I've ref refused to let go, to let go of, to I refuse to forgive yep. past pain, yep. and that naturally means it's going to be triggered in this event. Mm -hmm. And the law of attraction mm -hmm. works to trigger it. Yes, the law of attraction is there to make sure that I become aware that I have this pain, past pain that I need to let go of. 
that's the purpose of the law. It's kind of cool, isn't it? The, the law of compensation. So I've got something within me that I mm. don't want to forgive from the past. Yes. The law of compensation is working to, you Give know, pain. bring pain, say you're out of harmony with the way. There's something wrong the with you loving in love state. Yep. 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 It's happening. It's and trying then to correct me. It's trying to correct me. It's trying it's to bring attention you. to it. It's trying to say, hey, there's a problem. Hey, there's a problem. Hey, there's a problem. And then the law of attraction kind of works in unison Correct. with the law of compensation to say, hey, here's a whopping big clue and here's a whopping here's big clue. Here's what it's about. Here's, here's what it's about. This is about. the exact flavour and subject of what it's about. And That's right. It's pretty cool how it all works together. That's right. Yeah. It is very, very good how it yeah. works together. So, yep. yeah. Go on, you. Yeah, so, yeah. So. I just, I, I know sometimes you want to wrap, give the wrap up and I just want to, get in there before the wrap sure, up happens. Sure, yeah, far away. <laughs> um, what I find interesting is that often we can confuse. So, for example, I'm going on in my life and I have some awareness of these laws, law of compensation, forgiveness and repentance. I know about this. And I often find myself whenever I'm in pain, I'm thinking, that's compensation. This is working in my life, you know. But very often... I think it's easy for many of us to confuse when the pain is the compensatory pain is a result of me avoiding forgiveness on an issue as opposed to avoiding repentance on an issue. Like very often I'm thinking, I'm in pain because I haven't repented, I haven't repented, I haven't repented this thing. When when I do a bit of work on the issue, I go, oh, I am forgiven something. And that's keeping me locked in a set of beliefs and actions that is continually bringing me pain mm. and of course it works in the reverse where i'm like oh you know something's been done to me and that's causing Isn't me that to terrible? be this, this way is why and, I'm in so much pain. Yeah, yeah. drama drama yeah. and then i go uh oh, it's because i'm holding on to this really big expectation that is not actually loving from god's perspective that's right and, it, this and i is, need to be repentant yes, for that yeah belief you know? yeah. yeah so i just thought that was interesting when you raised this idea that Basically, the pain, whatever pain we're in, is the refusal to forgive and repent. And that is an action of compensation, isn't it? Uh, is it? Oh, yes, certainly. Yes. The refusal to forgive or repent means that we can no longer engage the higher law. Compensation must act and on that refusal. compensation must act upon the refusal. Yes. So yep. that compensatory pain is only there because I'm either not forgiving or not repenting. Yep. Okay, that's great knowledge. But then we also have to know... No, let's be real. Do I need to forgive or repent? What is it I'm really resisting? Because yeah, we can so resist in both directions, can't you we? You can, but it is usually more likely to resist repentance than it is to yes. resist forgiveness yeah. for many, many reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, repentance is more painful a process, mm. uh, and uh, and therefore most people tend to have a high or have a high tendency of avoiding it. Yeah. So it's usually. We prefer to forgive than we do to, prepare, to mm -hmm. repent mm -hmm. uh, frequently. Yeah. And uh, for that reason, we are often willing to, or, or sort of willing to forgive others for what they've done, yeah. but, uh, but less willing to repent yes. for what we've done. Yes. Yeah. And I wouldn't say we're very willing to forgive either, by the no. way. No. Um, but I'm just saying in proportion to our repentance, we're usually yeah, more, more willing. willing to forgive. <laughs> because I think it's ironic that, you know, when I look back on the last, especially the last decade of my life, the majority of what I have to repent for right now has happened as a result of my refusal to forgive in some very core areas. Yes. And I just said, no, I'm not feeling that pain. And then I did a whole heap of stuff that is just like, oh, you know, you know, more and more pain, not <laughs> just for me, but for others, <laughs> um, because that initial refusal to forgive was very adamant. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So so both processes are not as easy as you know, religious people would probably have you believe. Yeah. But... Um, at the end of the day, they are both very, very beneficial for the soul. Yeah. And we need to understand that conversation is only occurring because we're refusing to engage yeah. one of those very, very beneficial processes. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's why this whole discussion of compensation uh, was really necessary, wasn't it, in this, in this series? Because... We yeah. really want to draw the line between the pain that we're in, what is compensatory, and how forgiveness and repentance actually uh, can change that so dramatically. Yes. 
the the refusal to engage a higher law always results in us being bound by the lower law. Mm. This this is this is imposed physically. So we gave an example in another part of this discussion about the you know law of gravity and the law of aerodynamics. So mm. that's a physical ex example of how a higher law is able to overcome the effects of a lower law. Yes. And it also, it, it happens morally and ethically as, mm -hmm. as well as spiritually. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand that there's a consistency in the way in which these laws operate in that the higher law, if engaged with desire and passion, mm -hmm. in fact, that's the only way to engage a higher law. Yes. And if it's engaged, it, it sort of nullifies the effects of mm -hmm. the lower law. But the lower law must operate and does operate all the time. And if we can't engage the higher law, whether it's through ignorance or desired ignorance or, or refusal, yeah. um, the lower law will operate. Mm -hmm. And this is why it's very important to find out about these laws, because once we know them, we are able to engage them with you know, with desire or passion, yeah. and therefore nullify the effect of the lower law, which which is obviously would be very good. But getting back to the point of this part of the discussion, the question was asked about our pain, where does mm -hmm. it really come from? Mm -hmm. And it does not ever come from the, uh, you could say, unloving actions of others. It comes from our response to the unloving actions of others. Mm. Right, mm -hmm. as well as our own unloving actions. Mm -hmm. And this is what we must understand. And so if we do go back to the question, which mm -hmm. was really like, if I'm experiencing pain and suffering in my life, is that, the, is that compensation working on my own behavioural condition or can it be someone else being unloving to me? You're basically saying that if, yeah. there's, if I'm in pain, it even is. if nobody was unloving to me, that pain would still be uh, present in my life. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm also saying that if if you are in pain, it is a direct result of something you are choosing to do that's out of harmony with love. Yeah. The two things that you substantially can do that are out of harmony with love is to refuse to repent for mm -hmm. past or present feelings and attitudes and, and thoughts that are out of harmony with love. Yeah. And the other thing you can refuse to do is to refuse to forgive other people's unloving behaviour. Yeah. That's the only two causes of your pain. Mm. It's not the, co the cause of their pain are the, sa the same for them. Yeah. But, but we can't ever say that you have caused my pain. No. Because you haven't. No. You might have taken an action that I feel pained about, mm -hmm. but that's only probably because I've refused to forgive you yes. or refused to forgive others who did the same thing to me yeah. that you have done. Yeah. That's the only reason why I'm in pain. Yeah. And this applies a lot to relationships because in a lot, what I notice in a lot of partnership relationships is they're constantly blaming their partner for causing their pain, mm -hmm. but actually their pain has been caused by childhood events that have not been released, have not been mm -hmm. experienced and released. In other words, by the refusal to forgive mm -hmm. childhood events mm -hmm. or the refusal to repent for childhood belief systems that we have established. And then acted in. And, and then acted in. Fostered. And, and yep. that's what's causing my pain. Yes. Not, not you. Yes. So let's say we don't have sex for a year. Mm -hmm. You're not causing me pain. Yeah. Right? My pain is the result of belief systems that are in me that I'm refusing to repent for, mm -hmm. or the belief systems that are in me that I refuse to forgive the people who created them yeah. from the past. Yes. Not from the fact that you haven't had sex with me for a year. I could, yes. If I was in a completely loving state, you not having sex with me for 10 years is, is immaterial <laughs> to me loving you. I'd miss it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a different matter. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Whether When you say I miss it, you know, obviously, there's that pain, so if, I would have something well, if to look at. Well, it depends whether you miss it because of desire to engage in a uh, yes. loving relationship that that we both experiencing joy, and exchanging. or are you missing yeah. it because you have some addiction yeah. that you need to have met, and it doesn't really matter to you who you have sex with as long yes. as you get some sex. Yes. Well, that would depend a lot upon again what you've not repented for or what or you've not forgiven in forgiven. your past. Definitely. But the reality is. 
somebody not having in a relationship, not having sex with uh, sex with us for years shouldn't cause us pain if we truly love them. Yes. And if we were in a state of forgiveness and repentance uh, where we're actually engaging those high laws, we won't feel hurt by it. That, however, does not mean that we may not act mm. because we might say, well, this person has no desire, desire or passion for me. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be angry about that, but I'd just say, you've got no passion or desire for me. Why are you in this relationship? Well, yes. There's no point to be in a relationship with me if you have no passion and desire for me. So let's just go our separate ways if that's the way yeah. it is, you know. And if when yeah. you decide at some point you want a relationship with me, let me know. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. But I won't be angry and bitter and twisted about that. Yeah. Yeah. So what I see in relationships happening frequently is that they blame their partner for their hurt feelings. Mm -hmm. And then as a result of that, you know, we get into this real thing is oh, you're hurting me or you know i hurt you or you hurt me no i chose to act unlovingly towards you which is bound to pr provide some pain of some kind mm -hmm. to you but only if you choose to not forgive me yeah and only if i choose to not repent yes that's yeah. when the pain is yeah. going to come now i can choose to not repent and that's going to cause pain mm -hmm. and you can choose to not forgive and that will also cause pain yes to the relationship yeah. and this is what we need to understand and uh, and and if and somebody expects me mm -hmm. to forgive them mm -hmm. they are now not repentant mm -hmm. <laughs> and compensation will be acting upon that yes and uh, I, while i might not be hurt about that yep i would certainly act upon that yes right yeah. so if, so, for example, you did something that demonstrated a lack of love to me. I, rather than being hurt about it, I've forgiven, so I'm not hurt about it. But I know that you still have that feeling in you mm -hmm. until you deal with repentance. And I can go, well, you're not repentant. You're going to do it again. And I yeah. don't want to be around when you do do it again. Yeah. And so I've decided, well, you go and deal with that. And then let's look at our relationship again. You yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. But you wouldn't be angry and bitter and twisted about all that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah you'd be mm. pretty chill. So we so, need to start to understand that pain, our pain, is our responsibility. Yes. And really the only people who are experiencing pain and suffering as a result of other people's choices directly in that moment are children. Even then it's because they haven't been taught to forgive. To forgive, yeah. You know, and that's, understand repent. And that's it, it, understandable yeah, yeah. because children, you know, probably if they're with parents who haven't, are not forgivers, you yes. know, then naturally the child won't learn how to forgive. To forgive. Um, so it's understandable in a child that they may have pain and suffering, which is a result of other people's actions and choices because mm -hmm. they haven't, cho they don't know what to, to how do. to forgive. Yeah. But if everyone was taught to forgive mm -hmm. and everyone had an open attitude to forgiving, no child or adult would have pain and suffering that mm. stays within them mm. and affects the rest of their life. Yeah, very important, uh, very important aspect of our discussion. Yeah. yeah, so we need to understand, of course, that this has a large bearing on our discussion about forgiveness and repentance. You can see the key mm -hmm. of, of all pain and suffering really is, th is the refusal to forgive and repent, which, which then means the law of compensation must operate and will have to operate upon our soul until we choose forgiveness and repentance as as an alternative. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm.